Okay, fellas, we're in a little bit of a rough spot after those Napoli results, but if we win these next two games, then we can make our way through the knockouts after Christmas, and it's going to be a really nice way to enjoy your Christmas lunch, okay? So two big efforts coming up. If we win these games, we're through the knockouts. Let's go. everyone and welcome back to Husabik Heroes here on Sean Does FM. I hope you are doing well and today in episode number 30, the last one before Christmas, we are playing our last two group stage games of the Conference League against Motherwell. That is a massive one first up and then we play the North Macedonian team in Shkendija off the back of that. If we win both games, then we will definitely make our way through to the knockouts of the Conference League. So if you're looking forward to this episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video. And if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series, also remember to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well. It is greatly appreciated. So since yesterday's episode where we took on Shkendija and Napoli, if you missed that one, I'll leave a link to it above my head. In the top right corner, we have played another game against Napoli. We'll bring you guys the highlights of that one very shortly, but we have also turned fully professional, still kind of in the process of doing that there's some players still on part-time contracts but most of the ones that we do want to keep around are on full-time contracts still need to sort the staff out actually so that's something i'll be doing off the back of today's episode but we are now a professional club here at volsinger we'll bring you guys a little bit of an injury update before this motherwell game too because there's been a little bit of an impact in training due to that and we've picked up quite a few injuries just in the week or so that we have been professional but first up highlights from the game against Napoli since yesterday's episode. It was a stronger Napoli team than the team that we did face yesterday in this home game. A little bit sloppy at the back there from that shot from Almas, came off the upright, and it was Osiman who tucked it away, and they went 1-0 up early, but with just over 20 minutes to go, we got things level at the 67-minute mark. Mamaj off the bench gets a goal, and I thought for a minute we might be able to get something from this game, but Osiman gets a double there at the 75-minute mark with a really nice far post volley off a corner and not too long off the back of that. Just before full time, they put it to bed. Divock Origi, now at Napoli, is the Belgian king player I have a lot of time for being a real-life Liverpool fan. He put the game beyond doubt. Unfortunately, we do suffer a 3-1 loss at home against Napoli. As you can see, a much stronger team in this game than what was put out in the one that we played on camera yesterday. So not too disappointed with the result, albeit we actually were right in that game until the last quarter of an hour. So another somewhat encouraging performance there against a good team despite the result not going our way. So what that means going into today's episode, if we flick over to the new season, because apparently these Conference League group games in today's episode are part of an entirely new season. We've got Motherwell and Shkendija in the other game on that match day. It was Motherwell beating Shkendija 4-1. So what that means is with Motherwell being three points ahead of us, we need to win the first game of today's episode. Otherwise, Motherwell are going to have the head-to-head -head over us, and that will pretty much kill off our chances of going through. The only way that we could go above Motherwell is if us, them, and Shkandija ended up on equal points like it finished at the end of yesterday's episode. But that is unlikely. We do not want to finish on equal points with the North Macedonian outfit because then we will be in a spot of bolle ourselves. So the main thing coming out of today's episode is that if we win both games, we should make our way through to the knockouts. The only slight hiccup that could happen is if we did win this first game, but somehow Motherwell did pick up points away at Napoli, but that's probably a little bit unlikely. But the first game of today's episode is crucial to our chances of getting out of this group, and our team going into this game is a little bit injury-prone. You can see, well, you probably can't see because my head's in the way, but we've had a few players who have just recovered from Little Niggles, Ledson, who's a bench player for us in these European games. He's just recovered from food poisoning. And Leandro Diaz, just back in time from a bruised five. But in terms of injuries, one European player is missing. It's the goalkeeper who has just stepped into the first choice most recently, and that is Michel Serafellini. He has an abdominal strain. He is out for the rest of these Conference League games. That means that Richmond Badu does come back into the team. So if we go have a look at what our squad looks like, 
going into this game. It's more or less the team that's been playing most of this European season, just that change in the midfield that we made at the start of the group stages with Nicolusti Caviglia coming in for Boscolo Shio, seeing as he was a little bit injured at the time we did that registration, but it's a pretty strong team, and hopefully we can get a little bit of revenge on Motherwell. We played pretty well against them last time at home, didn't quite take our chances, and it came back to bite us. Hopefully we can pick up the three points here. Otherwise, I think our conference league journey is over, and we will come back shortly from Fur Park and see if we can get the job done in the first game of today's episode. Eight minutes gone and we do have the first highlight of this game and we are on the attack. Stefanson tries to pick out Mafio, slide tackle, forced to visit Dursky. Dordovic, he possibly could have squared that to Ledson, took the shot on himself, a good save from Kelly and it remains nil all after about a quarter of an hour. And not long off the back of that first chance, we just kept possession back there from Motherwell as they were on the attack and a nice long ball there for Ledson, just on the edge of the box. What can he do? Puts the ball into the mix. It's Viderski with a header. Comes off the upright, not this again. It's a game that we need to be winning. Some good early chances, but it does remain nil all. 33 minutes gone, and we have a corner. Ledson puts it in. Kurt Shaw with the header over the bar. We are still creating good chances from aerial situations, but can't hit the target. It remains nil all late in the first half. And that is half time in this game at Motherwell, the game that we do need to win. We have looked pretty dominant in the highlights. Stats wise, the game's a little bit more even but quite encouraged hopefully we can take a chance here in the second half and go up and give ourselves a chance of getting out of this group we're going to make one change at halftime Leandro Diaz just recovering from that injury doesn't quite seem to be performing as well as he is capable of so Pat Brzezicki can come on for him this might be one of his last games in a Volsinger shirt as he is a future transfer arranged and hopefully we can keep this going but get a goal in the back of the net and give ourselves a chance of getting out of this group. And a very early highlight here to start the second half, a throw from the substitute and Pat Brzezicki, a man who is going back to Poland, joining a club, seeing as he's not too good ability-wise compared to the rest of the squad these days. He is quite versatile in terms of what he can do in this team. Oh, that's an absolute gift for Stefanson on and the save from Kelly. Should have been a goal. We have had some golden chances, chances. We need to be taking if we want to make our way through to the knockouts. We're going to get shown the corner though. Dordovic puts it in. Mikel gets his head to it just over the bar. Boy, oh boy, we should be ahead, but we're not. Nil all early in the second half. 58 minutes gone. We have yet another throw this time inside the final third. And Dordovic is in possession. Puts the ball in for Stefanson. Gets his head on the end of that. And finally, we have scored a goal against Motherwell. The amount of chances that we've created in the two games against these guys has been very high, but for some reason, we've just blown a couple of really good ones, but this time, a simple ball in from Dordovic, and Stefanson gets his head on the end of that, goes across the face of goal, nothing the goalkeeper can do that time, and we go 1-0 up at the hour mark, and I think it's time for us to make a substitution as well. Nicolusi Caviglia just struggling out there a little bit on a 6.4, so Musumiki can come on for him, him and Svidurski can switch around in the midfield, but we are 1-0 up with just under a half hour to go. 17 minutes gone, and it is a throw-in here for Motherwell. It's a long one, but Kurt Shaw deals with it. O'Donnell is there, puts the ball into the mixer. Surely he's offside there, Richardson. That looked far too good to be true. He better be offside, because that would be a really soft goal to concede after having to work so hard to get in front. In this game, and he's onside, and that is so annoying. We had to work so hard for that goal, as I was saying, but they have just broken through us in their first real highlight of the game. Boy, he must just be onside there, Richardson. It looked a little bit too good to be true. Kurt Shaw after tying up the initial ball in, and he looks like he might just be a foot offside there, but the referee and VAR have given it, and we do need another goal. In this game now, one all with 18 minutes left, and we're going to make our last substitution as well. Willemosa on a yellow card and a red heart to Ledson can come on for him. We'll switch around our midfield a little bit more. In fact, I'm pretty sure you guys might not have seen Ledson. He's a little bit of a player coach here at the club these days, so we'll give you guys a quick look at what he looks like. He's a player who is going to be staying around as he's also a coach, so quite a useful player to have around, quite versatile, but that's going to be our last substitution, and we do need a goal now with 18 minutes left to try and make our way through to the knockouts. 
of the Conference League. Otherwise, it is more or less Napoli and Motherwell. Confirms Viderski with a volley there, but it's a soft line straight at Kelly. Still need a goal in these last 16 minutes. 77 minutes gone. It's a free kick here to Motherwell. Starting to get on top of us. A header there from Finley goes just over the bar, and it remains one all with about 10 minutes left. 82 minutes gone yet again. It looks like it's going to be Motherwell on the attack, but good little interception there from Stefanson. He's had a good game with a goal, and now he gets the ball back for us, and hopefully we can get one more chance out of that game, but Ledson completely misjudges that, and Motherwell are back on the attack. Long switch out there to McGlone. What can he do? Just holds the ball up, goes towards the corner. Back for MacArthur Donnelly into Tierney. He unleashes one just over the bar there from Tierney. It does remain one all as we enter the last few minutes of this game. Hopefully, we can create something as Puck Rizicki does pick up a yellow card and we do need a goal. We'll just get these midfielders, make sure that they're all good in terms of not easing off tackles now that Lilamosa has gone off the field. Pretty encouraged by the way we're playing in this game. You look at the stats, we just haven't quite been clinical enough. We are in the last minute. Unfortunately, it's just not going to be for us. Motherwell yet again seemed to somewhat burgle a result against us in the Conference League. And unfortunately, that means that we are not going to be making our way through to the knockouts this season. So disappointing because I thought we were good enough to win that game. And also the first game against Motherwell as well. It was a game we at least deserve the draw from, but fairly encouraged with the performance. But we are three points behind Motherwell now, and they still have the head-to-head -head advantage over us. Shindika cannot catch Motherwell up, so that is that. We are going to be finishing third at best in this group, so that's disappointing. But we'll come back shortly, play the last game of the season, and see if we can finish on a high against Skindija. And just underway in this last game of the season, absolutely nothing riding on it except a little bit more money and a little bit more coefficient, so a win here would actually be quite good. An unchanged lineup for Ashkendija are in the red and black. And Dorlev gets a shot off. In fact, it's Dorlev. And that's really poor from Badu. Another one of those sort of efforts and goal there. That's a bit poor. And we go 1-0 down early. And this is not how we want to be ending the season. Hopefully, we can come from behind. This is a game we really should not be losing. But that's so poor. Might not have got to it anyway, but he hasn't really made much of an effort there, unfortunately. Has Baru, and we go 1-0 down early to the North Macedonian outfit, albeit shortly off the back of that. It is a free kick. Ledson receives it. Diaz and Fiverdurski, and just puts that over the bar, and it does remain 1-0 to Skendija early doors. 17 minutes gone. Another highlight here. Skendija were on the attack, but Diaz picks things back up for us, and hopefully we can strike back sooner rather than later, because the money and the coefficient from this game could be quite useful for the future. Dordovic with a shot on the volley, gets a lot of help from the woodwork, and he gets another goal in the Conference League, obviously with the season in Iceland ticking over. It's his first goal of the season, of course. It's not really, but just the way that the seasons work here in Iceland. Nice ball there from Ledson. He just gets enough help from the post to just sneak that over the line, and after 18 minutes, we are back in this at one all. 32 minutes gone, we have a free kick played into Dordovic inside the box, back to Mafio. Ledson with a header, just puts it high, just near to be on target, and I think that would have been a goal, starting to get right in the rhythm here, but the scoreline does remain one all, albeit we have another free kick shortly off the back of that. Stefansson nearly got through there, but a good slide tackle from the North Macedonian team's defence, and we do get the ball back, though, from the clearance, not to build yet. Another attack, Svidurski, Mafio to Dordovic, back and for Svidurski. So some good passing here over to Nikolusi, and now we look to get them down the left-hand side. Ledson makes his way towards the byline, puts one in for Dordovic at the far post. In fact, it doesn't, because it's hit Leshy straight in the gob, and it goes into his own net, and that is a very fortunate goal, but we will take it, and we go 2-1 up after a little bit, of a rough start in this game. It's another kind of assist there for Ledson. It's a real unfortunate goal. It's just absolutely whacked him in the header. Dead set Falcon. And due to an own goal, we go 2-1 up just before halftime. And we are 2-1 up here at halftime in this last Conference League game. It is still nil all between Napoli and Motherwell in Italy. So it might have actually worked out that that win over Motherwell wouldn't have mattered anyway. But done pretty well after a bit of a rough start in this game. We'll make no substitutions. Everyone seems 
pretty fit and fresh out there with this being the last game of the season. Hopefully we can make it a little bit more comfortable than the one goal margin during the second half. 66 minutes gone, we have our first highlight of the second half, a corner to Dordovic, Mikel gets his head on the end of that, goes high, and it does remain 2-1 with about 20 minutes left to go in the game. 73 minutes gone, and we have a free kick, so things starting to pick up here in the second half, and Mikel picks out Ledson, just holds the ball up inside the byline, Nicolusi back to Ledson, nice play from him. Lilamosa with a long shot, and he buries it in the bottom right corner, Lilamosa, who has picked up yet. Another yellow card in today's game might mean he has a European suspension coming up, but not going to affect us too much, that one, considering our position in the competition. But it's a well-worked goal, good short passing, led song involved quite heavily, and a really good strike there from Lilamosa from outside the box, and that gives us a nice little cushion. Free one up inside the last 20 minutes. 77 minutes gone now, and we do have a throw inside the final third again. Diaz looking far post. For Dordovic gets his head on the end of that, just goes over the bar and I think it's time for us to make a few substitutions. There's a few players out there on Red Heart so we'll make a couple of changes just to make sure we don't suffer any silly injuries in this last game of the season. Kurt Shaw down to a Red Heart so we can bring on a player who is looking for a little bit more game time at the moment and Andreas Son so he can come on for him and also we have Dordovic who is on a Red Heart as well so Mamaj can come on for him. You note that Napoli have now taken the lead against Motherwell. Not that that impacts us much, considering the head-to-head. Free one up with 12 minutes left to play. And up to the 85-minute mark here. Time for us to make our last substitution of the season. Musa Miki can come on for Lilimosa. Just take him off on a red heart and that yellow card as well. Did well today, actually, with a good goal. But we into the last five minutes of this game. We have been very dominant stat-wise. A little bit weird how we actually ended up behind in that game with the only shot of the game, although they have now got off a second shot late on, but we end things with a 3-1 win, a pretty good one as well, a little bit disappointing that early goal, but we come back nicely and pick up a 3-1 win, which will help us out both financially and with the coefficient, but unfortunately, that head-to-head record against Motherwell is what's going to cost us in the Conference League, level on points with them, but because of the head-to-head, they are going to go through ahead of us, so not a bad first season in Europe for us, but it could have also been oh so much better so a little bit frustrating but not a bad season at all there you can see how things finish we actually had the better goal differential as well so that's a little bit unfortunate that head to head and we unfortunately are knocked out of the conference league and we'll come back shortly and do a little bit of an end of season review and we are back after that last game of the season going out in the conference league because of that head to head against Motherwell those games which I thought both of them were very winnable for us unfortunately though we didn't get the job done, so that's what costs us. But time to do a little bit of a different end of season review because unfortunately I can't go back to the end of season review we got about a month or so ago when the Napoli games were taking place. So with the way that the European season does work, that happened still during our season. So it felt a little bit weird to do it then, but we'll start off with the goal of the season. I'm pretty sure this is the one that they were talking about when the awards did come up. It was for... Vukan Dordovic at the 53 minute mark in an away trip to Phil Kerr. It was a free kick. It falls to Mikel and he plays that back to Dordovic from outside the box and just rockets that into the bottom right corner to make it a 2 0 win away from home. That is what got goal of the season. I'm pretty sure it was that one. It was a goal from Dordovic against Phil Kerr. It was away from home. So I'm pretty sure that one is the one that got goal of the season. But we'll go over to the best 11 because that's probably going to be the easiest way to show you guys who performed best for us in this most recent season. You can see there our starting 11, which was for most of last season. That's what was voted the best 11 for the season that has just gone. In terms of player of the season, it was Ledson. He also picked up young player of the season as well with that 7.5 average rating, his seven goals. If we have a look at his profile, hopefully we can have a look at his assists from last year as well. If we go and click on 2023, seven goals, 13 assists, seven player of the matches. He was very good for us, was the young Brazilian player who hasn't actually signed a full-time contract yet. He just wants a little bit too much at the first time of asking, but as a player who we definitely want to keep around as he is not far away from being homegrown at the club. So Ledson picked up most of the awards in terms of signing of the season. It was Kurt Shaw who picked up signing of the season with that 7.39 average rating at the back. So he had a very good season as well. So those were the awards 
that were won at the end of season review. We also actually picked up the Icelandic manager of the season as well. So that was quite nice as well. And there's how our best 11 from last year looks in terms of the overall best 11. This is what it looks like. A few new faces going in there. You've got the likes of Badu, Mafio, Shaw, Diaz, Lilimosa, Svidersky, Ledson and Stefansson from our current team are all in that best 11. And also on the bench, you've got Mikel, you've got Dordovic, Boscolo, Shio. And if we make our way down a little bit further, in fact, that is all the players who we have currently at the club who are in the best 11, but it's starting to become a little bit more dominated by the players who we have currently at the club. So clearly, we're building something quite good here at Volsinger. And hopefully next season, we can build on it a little bit more, albeit next season in Europe anyway. We will not hopefully be in the Conference League. If we are in the Conference League, it means that we've messed up things a little bit because we do start off in the Champions League qualifiers being the defending champions of the top division here in Iceland. So that's a little bit of a look at a slightly different end of season review, seeing as we can't go back and look at the one that we got a month or so ago. And that will do it for the end of season three here of Husavik Heroes. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. A pretty good season, truth be told. Of course, we won the Deal de Picard. We won the Super Cup thing that we had. And we also won the Islands Guild. And so we did pick up three trophies, made a really good fist of our first time in the Conference League as well. So on the whole, it was a very good season. And from here, we should be able to really grow and start doing the Build a Nation side of this challenge now that we have turned professional. Maybe one more season of consolidation at the top of the Icelandic league, then we can maybe look at bringing some players in, loaning them out to other clubs and starting to get those teams to help us out in building Iceland towards the top. In fact, while we're here, we might just have a quick little look at how we're trending in terms of the coefficient before we wrap things up and we'll have a quick little look at where we rank in terms of this season because we are actually on the top page thanks to our work here in Iceland this season. We have down there just below Serbia towards the bottom. We'll just scroll down in case my head is blocking it, but we have picked up a 5.5 coefficient this season. That is a very good one. That's going to be very useful to offset the 1.5 that we're losing. If we can keep this up, it will also help offset those really bad years we had in 1920 and 2021. So what that means for next season, we are going to have a very good rise up the coefficient charts, albeit there is still a half season of European football left, but we are looking very good for a big jump up the coefficient rankings for next season when that does happen. So we've done some good work here at Volsunga this year in terms of helping to build us up in terms of the coefficient. And hopefully we can keep that up when we get back into the swing of things next season and off the back of Christmas. So that will do it for this season at Volsunga in terms of when we will come back. Not entirely sure. I'm probably going to flick through the deal to Picard fairly quickly. We might just come back for that if we get a final. I'm not exactly sure when we're going to be coming back on the channel as well. Things probably won't come back to regular uploads until about the week of the 10th of January. I might get the odd little video out here and there in between now and then, but no guarantee. So if you have not done so already, do make sure that you hit that notification bell. And if you are enjoying the series, also remember to hit the subscribe button as well and hit that thumbs up on today's video. If you did enjoy it, I hope you guys have a really good Christmas. Make sure you enjoy it. Enjoy the food and all that good stuff because that's always very nice. In fact, I'm about to enter Chef Shaw mode. So we'll just have a look at the menu here because I haven't quite had enough chance to have a look at what I'm supposed to be cooking yet. So we'll just have a quick look at our menu and it looks, looks all right. There we go. We'll see if we can get that focused on camera for you guys. Is it focusing? We'll read it out. We'll get you guys nice and hungry. Obviously, I'm in New Zealand and it's when this video comes out, it's the day before Christmas, so if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, sorry, but I'm like a day out from Christmas. So we have got a summer antipesto platter, so pretty much veggies and dip, so that's solid during summer. Uh, balsamic cherry glazed ham with roasted baby carrots. I think I can handle that. We've got a lamb leg with stuffing balls and gravy. That's solid New Zealand food. Roasted Mediterranean salad, so that's something for the vegans with pesto and pine nuts. Garlic butter potatoes, solid. We've got desserts, now desserts, here we go. Rhubarb and pistachio pavlova, proper kiwi food that. And we've got a chocolate tiramisu tart, that is, that's the showstopper. So that's what we're having. Hopefully you guys enjoy your Christmas as well. Hope you guys have a good one. Make sure you spend it nicely with all your family and friends. And until the next time I see you, 
for the start of season four. As I said, do make sure to hit that notification bell so you are informed when that video drops because I'm not too sure how things are going to work on the channel until I do get back to work permanently and the people I live with also get back to work permanently. So things might be a little bit choppy over the next few weeks. So do make sure to hit that notification bell. But until I see you next, thank you very much for watching. Have a good Christmas and keep on keeping on. Cheers.